Hi, my name is Donald Ben. I'm the instructor of Call Center Cash. And what Call Center Cash is, is a course that is meant to help you go from zero to launch in 30 to 60 days of a remote call center. So it's really cool. But this video is to talk about what is a virtual receptionist company and why is it a fantastic business opportunity. So first, let's break down a little bit about what a virtual receptionist company is. Essentially, uh, the way a virtual receptionist company works is the simplest way to put it is like a premium answering service. Okay, so if you look at the way uh, that different small businesses, in particular, get their calls answered, they either do it themselves, or they have like a traditional answering service, or they have uh, some type of like virtual assistant company, you know someone from like the Philippines or, you know, maybe a high paid one in the, the U.S. that does it, or they hire someone in-house, okay? Now, there's pros and cons to each one of those uh, sort of solutions or options, uh, but I believe a virtual receptionist company, not virtual assistant, but virtual receptionist companies are the best fit for most types of small businesses. Now, here's why. The premise of a virtual receptionist company is that you have uh, receptionists that are employed by the company you run, right? So say you start a virtual receptionist company, you employ the agent or receptionist, right? Depending on how you decide to name them, you employ the agents in-house, and then you allow different small businesses to sign up for your service in which you provide them answering services, very high quality premium answering services, uh, that goes outside of what a traditional answering service does. So what a traditional answering service does is they typically uh, will answer the phone and they will take down the caller's information and send a message over to the client, right? Now, what a virtual receptionist company does is do that as well as many things beyond that. So not only are they willing to take down information and send messages, they're also willing to transfer calls, right? Uh, they're able to book appointments. If it's like for a law firm, they would schedule consultations on behalf of the caller with the, uh, let's say they're a potential client for the attorney or they're an existing client for the attorney. They, that agent, that virtual receptionist would take the call, you know, fill out all the details in the form and send that information over with an appointment book, right? So it's a lot more helpful. Uh, another thing that some virtual receptionist company do, do is stuff like live chat. They'll handle live chat. Um, another thing they'll do is sort of like uh, outbound calling. So uh, in our case, we did uh, one by one outbound call. So if, for instance, again, one of our attorney clients wanted us to make an outbound call on their behalf, you know, a typical request would be, hey, could you guys call the, you know, local county clerk's office and ask if they received the fact that my office sent to them? It's very important. We would then call on behalf of that client of ours and, and ask, hey, did you guys receive the fact from the law offices of client lawyer? Uh, and then, you know, we get that information and then we'd be able to uh, let our client know whether or not that county uh, clerk's office received the fact. So it's just, it's a very simple, uh, you know, not very complicated service offering. But again, because it goes a little bit beyond what a traditional answering service does, not only are we able to charge a higher premium for it, um, it's something that people want, that small business owners want. So uh, how does it differ from like a virtual assistant? So a virtual assistant company, what they typically do is rather than being an emphasis on phone call, they're task based. So sometimes they'll be the ones handling the phone. Uh, more often they'll do things like task, like they'll do social media posts, they'll do blog posts. Uh, they might do some light bookkeeping type thing. Uh, they might do, you know, market research. If someone is considering entering a new, like, market segment or whatever, they'll do some market research. They tend to do a lot of the tedious stuff that the uh, their client doesn't want to do themselves. Now, 
it's an awesome sort of solution for a lot of different situations, but a lot of times small businesses don't have this big need for all kinds of tasks to be completed. They just need to make sure that their phones are answered. So in that case, a virtual receptionist company is typically a lot less expensive than a VA, and again, it's a more pointed solution to what that potential client actually needs. And I believe it's a much larger, broader pool. Now, another thing uh, that sort of separates a virtual receptionist company from, say, a traditional answering service, in our case, we did uh, a small team of agents that would take call for uh, like a sort of a small team of different clients. So what happens is that each one of our clients, as well as our client caller, would get some familiarity, right? So <clears throat> instead of, you know, a caller calls into the call center, right, or the service, and they're trying to call Bob Plumbing Company. And say Bob Plumbing Company is using the answering service. Well, anyone, any agent at that answering service could pick up the phone. It could be agent number 102 that says, hey, thanks for calling Bob Plumbing. How can I help you? And then the caller will say, hey, I need an appointment. And the agent with the traditional answering service will say, hey, okay, no problem. Um, let me take down your information and I'll have somebody reach out to you within 24 to 48 hours. That's the typical thing. Now the issue there, and this is very helpful for certain companies, but the issue there is that if you're a caller and you're looking for a plumbing service, how do you typically go about it, right? If you really need plumbing right now, you call, sometimes you're reaching voicemail. Uh, sometimes you'll reach an answering service, they'll take down your information and someone will call you back in 24 to 48 hours. I don't want to call back in 24 to 48 hours. I want to call back immediately. Or I want to talk to someone now, right? Um, so basically a lot of times you're calling down the list. You might call 15 different plumbers until you find the first plumber <clears throat> that is able to service you ASAP. Uh, that, you know, you're talking to the person or at least someone that can definitely help you, and you acknowledge as to what your problem is, maybe you get some type of pricing, some type of quote, and you know when they're going to come out, right? So a traditional answering service will never provide that information to a caller, but a virtual receptionist company, that's a typical sort of service that's offered, right? So we had different local service businesses, such as plumbers, as clients. Uh, we had cleaning companies. People would call in and say, hey, you know, I'd like to schedule a, a potential cleaning. Okay, great. Uh, you know, how many beds and bathrooms do you have? We get down all the information, and we get an appointment on the book. That caller knows exactly how much they're going to spend. And our client, the cleaning company owner, doesn't have to worry about trying to close the deal because they've already landed a client. They don't simply get a lead with information that hopefully they follow up on quickly enough and most of the time when they call back, you know, that lead it calls someone else. We capture the lead on behalf of our client a lot more often and that makes our service a lot more valuable. It pays for itself a lot more quickly. So that is what a virtual reception company is. And now let's talk a bit about why it's such a great opportunity, especially within the call center space. Right? So there's a lot of different call centers in the call center space. Um, and I'm going to talk a bit more about this in a separate video, but there's basically four different types of uh, call centers. One is the ones that are like, you know, they're large, uh, they're like on premise, meaning all the agents are like at a physical office somewhere in like a, a headquarters, right? And the clients that they get are typically large. The clients are spending per month, you know, five, six, even seven figures uh, per month. And so what happens is a call center with that setup, they'll land, you know, hopefully like 10 to 15 different clients that are all large contracts, right? And they try to secure those contracts as long as possible. And once they land a client, they have, or a contract, they hire agents specifically for those contracts, right? Um, and this is for all independent call centers. Internal call centers like, you know, Sprint would have their own internal call center, that's different. You're not going to be the one that creates an internal call center for Sprint unless you're a freelancer. So in terms of having an independent call center, uh, that's one of the types. Another type is, um, you know, like these large remote call centers that are like overseas, 
Um, you know, depending on what country you're in, not all of the viewers of this video, of course, are going to be from the U.S. or Canada, right? So, say you're in the Philippines right now, uh, and for some reason, you know, your company wants to have a call center out of India. Uh, those types of call centers are pretty prevalent right now. Again, they're large, oftentimes they're centralized, uh, and the focus is more on, like, customer service. They're not doing things like trying to, you know, close clients or all kinds of stuff. Customer service and tech support. Again, they're trying to large, land large contracts, and what happens is that when you have 10 to 15 different large clients, if you lose any of those clients, well, that has a drastic impact on your company. And so with the virtual reception company, in our case, all of our clients were small. They paid us a few hundred dollars a month on average. So instead of having 10 to 15 of them, you have like a few hundred. And when you have a few hundred clients, if you lose one of your clients, it doesn't impact your business at all. You're not letting anyone go. There's no layoff. You don't have to, like, you know, change your business plan or whatever. And the beautiful thing is, because you're not beholden to the contract size of each of your, you know, typical size clients, you don't have to focus on all of these things to make sure that they're happy, right? Now... Obviously, when you go into this type of business, you want to make sure you're providing a high standard of service. But you don't want to have to sacrifice the whole of your service offering just to please one or two of your clients. And so with this model, you don't have to do that. Okay? And I'll tell you right now, as someone that ran one of these types of companies for five and a half years and then it got acquired, it was so much less stressful than what a lot of call center owners have to deal with. And frankly, our turnover in terms of like agents and stuff was very low. Uh, in fact, it was less than 10% as a result of having a much less stressful model. Okay? Now, the final type of typical call center is a remote call center. So there's the remote call centers that have, you know, large contract sizes. And if you've heard of uh, a company called Arise uh, Solutions, they actually employ a lot of freelancers that sort of do that. And they land these large clients and all of their agents are working from home. Uh, but they're, again, they're large clients and if they lose a client, then it's a big impact on the company. What we do as a virtual receptionist company is we are remote, so all of our agents work from home, but they're also small clients. So not only do we not have to pay for the cost of a central office, right, which are big fees, uh, we don't have to pay for all of these things that come with, you know, trying to get onboarded for a large new contract. We simply land, uh, you know, our clients and we get to a few hundred, and in the position of having a few hundred clients, just about everyone is making more money than they've ever made before in their life. So that's the premise of a virtual reception company. You know, it's a very low stress business. It's a very high value business for, you know, the people in your target market that you're serving. And I believe that, especially in this time, it's a great time to get involved. Thanks a lot for listening and feel free to subscribe because I will be doing more videos on this topic.